what kind of message does this BRIC summit send to the West? We've got some 36 countries, more than 20 heads of state in Kazan, uh, greeting and meeting Vladimir Putin and shaking his hand. Well, that's right. So, first of all, uh, the Western um, attempt to isolate Russia uh, hasn't worked um, and didn't even start working from the very beginning of the invasion of Ukraine in 2022. That's number one. But number two, and even more broadly, Asiya, th th this is the sign of things to come. Uh, what we're seeing in uh, Kazan are the outlines of the multipolar world with all of its uh, birth pangs. Uh, so this is the wave of the future. This is the global majority coming together to um, essentially set up a, an economic uh, system that is um, not anti-Western, but simply non-Western, where these non-Western actors get an equal say in the rules of the game as it's played. Can these countries make a difference in terms of some of this global challenges, conflicts, if you see, we're seeing around the world? Obviously, what's happening in Ukraine, um, also what's happening in Lebanon and Gaza. I mean, BRICS has been around a long time. This conflict has been going around for more than a year now. And yet, where is the blueprint for solution? Where is the proposal? I mean, if they can really, truly make a difference, the West would like to see it. Bring it on. That's right, uh, except that BRICS is not a military uh, bloc. Um, it is also not an organization that's dominated by a hegemon. So the, whatever decisions it makes, uh, it will have to make through consensus. But ultimately, um, I think it's very important for the viewers to remember that BRICS is a forum. It is not yet a fully functional organization. It has no official headquarters. It has no uh, official secretariat, for example. Um, it is a loose organization. Uh, and it is ultimately economic. Now, its focus on multilateralism and the importance of diplomacy is, uh, has been uh, heard. Um, but it is not an organization that can step in and impose diplomatic uh, decisions. Not even the United Nations uh, can do that. And it has been a lot, uh, around for a lot uh, longer. So I think the key here is to tamper expectations in terms of the BRICS solving uh, world crises, but look at BRICS more as the outcome of those uh, crises. Because once the West weaponized its, um, its uh, currencies and its economic systems, uh, it encouraged the development of alternative ways of trading. Professor, you brought up the good word here, consensus. Uh, will BRICS expansion with these new members make consensus or reaching a consensus on economic issues, on whatever issue, will it make it more difficult? I see. That's a great question. Um, and uh, it will um, if the issues are particularly divisive. But I think the, uh, the BRICS members have been so far reasonably successful at uh, working on big questions without descending into divisive uh, peculiarities. What unites all the members of the BRICS so far is, in a sense, a negative goal, which is to de-Westernize international uh, uh, economic trade relations. And in that, there is a very broad consensus. The de-dollarization of the global economy has already begun as countries switch to their national currencies in bilateral trade. So BRICS will be looking as its next step to multilateralize that process, but that's going to take some time. All right, we'll have to leave it there. Professor Anton Fedyashin, thank you.